Good morning. I'm Mike Parker. And today, the organization asked me to come up and speak about the Dream Center. Six years ago, my wife, my kids, and I founded the Dream Center for St. Vincent de Paul. And my story goes like this. Married 31 years this year. So six years ago is 25th wedding anniversary. I'm in a jewelry store. And have reached a certain amount of success that following, you know, perhaps what I've seen others do or what I thought might be right, looking at jewelry, looking at a pink diamond ring, pink stone. I'd seen regular stones, I'd seen pink, they seemed really nice, and I thought this would be the right thing to do. And as we climbed the economic ladder from pink stone to pink stone and, and it became a, a serious amount of money, I, I, my heart just stopped. And it wasn't for fear of the money necessarily. It was more that, you know, what's my motive? What am I really trying to accomplish? What does this really say? And for whom? And so I took a break. I talked to the owner and took a pause and got in my car. And checking my motives, I, I, I realized that there was pride, ego, proving something to someone that I began to feel that was unnecessary. And so my car drove to St. Vincent de Paul, St. Vincent de Paul. And I met Steve, where he's out here somewhere. But, and, and then I met Shannon. And we walked the campus. And like many of you, my kids and I had gone to the dining hall and donated time and done the service work there and, and found it meaningful. And when we hit the dining hall, it hit me. They had this captured audience. You have 200 kids a night who, if you're like me when you were in grade school, you ate in about three or four minutes so that you'd increase recess time. And, and I watched the kids, and that's what they do. They eat in about six minutes, and then they run around the dining hall and uh, wait for parents to, to be ready, take the bus back or walk back or, or, or the vans at St. Vincent Supplies. And so it, it, it came to me at that moment. We donated on the spot. We told Steve on the spot that we wanted to build this. And we had not named it yet, but it then came to us very quickly. It should be called the Dream Center. And Steve and Shannon had to do a lot of work to get it done and the team, and you're gonna meet some of those in a minute. And I'm gonna quickly run you through some slides on what's happened in the last five, about a year to build and what's happened in the last five years. Artist rendering. My kids developed this, three daughters who donated time and remind ourselves of Lego land in California. And we had huge Legos built. Those are actual two and a half foot Legos building these walls that open up in eight foot pods. Children's section with Tunnels, activities. There's your dream center, four or five different shots. Please notice the, the mobiles at the top, the cloud cover. Designing one day, I met a, a, a lady named Merritt, who is, if she's here, thank you, Merritt, um, who helped us design, find, make this happen operationally. On her desk was a mobile, and the mobile was these shimmering, you know, it's only a foot big, shimmering clouds. It looked like mother of pearl. And the light was catching it, and it caught me. So I asked her if I could borrow it. We found the artist in Flagstaff. We drove to see her, and she makes mobiles for desks. And I began to explain to her that we needed six-foot mobiles that would hang from the ceiling three feet apart and cover 90 feet. And she looked at me like I should drive back to Phoenix. Well, she made the mobiles. And today, as the sun comes down every evening when they eat in the dining hall and the sun comes through on those shimmering mobiles and the cloud cover is there and when your kids, your 450 kids last night, pardon me, 150 kids last night, 450 a week, when those kids last night, even if it's one or two of them, looked up just for a moment 
and thought for a moment, now that I'm reading, now that I have computers, now that I have tutoring, now that I have science, every day as he mentioned to Paul, just maybe, right? Just maybe this doesn't have to be my life. That can be my life. During construction, the kids participated. That is real, that is them, and it was a mess. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Gilbane, construction, Tom was terrific. Dedication night, my wife in the top left. It took 24 hours for Anna Parker to tell me on the 25th wedding anniversary gift how grateful she was for it, but that everything I saw in her, the love, the compassion, the honoring of our family, the teaching our daughters, the heart of Christianity, everything she got from her mother. And in the bottom right is Ana Maria Manta, who is named after because my wife wouldn't accept the gift. So it belongs to her mother. Driven, resilient, earn, action, motivated, serve others. This is what the kids do. This is not us. These kids are so driven, resilient, come down for a night. Earn 800 checkbooks with commerce in it. They earn money for reading books and they can go to the Dream Center gift store. Cynthia's gonna speak about that some. They take action. They're motivated. They're motivated to change their existence today. They're motivated to have a better life. And they're charitable. They are kind to each other, they look out for each other, they tutor each other, and it's the Dream Center. The interesting thing about it now is, is that many, many organizations you see around here continue to give. They gave long before the Dream Center was there. They will give long after it's maybe tired. But the difference is, is now they give differently. They not only give by coming and serving and helping out with food like Fox Group did, but they also give by walking over to the Dream Center and then begin to give their intellectual property, their talents. They offer those up and they're unique and they're different and they're growing and they're blossoming. And so because that Dream Center's there and they were there to begin with for serving, they are now seeing other ways to serve and it's a ripple effect that's astounding. From a seed. That left-hand column is your kids that are reading books. Over 600 kids now have read. 27 kids, Cynthia will tell you, were illiterate completely and now read. It was said that from zero to seven, we learn to read. From seven on, we read to learn. And your kids are now reading to learn. The most crazy thing, I think, or one of the most crazy things that's happened in the last five years is your kids now play chess. Ten games last night, ten matches. It'd kill, it'd kill me if I said games. Ten matches last night, two tournaments a week. Before I even knew that, because it had nothing to do with us, that chess had bubbled up in my company, in my small business, I've often said that the world plays checkers, we play chess. If you can play chess, if you can handle strategy, forward thinking, consequences of our actions, competitiveness, failure, you can compete in this world. And your kids are playing chess, 50 or more. Activities upon activities every single night, like Mark said, 365, the Dream Center is open. Amazing tutoring every single night from volunteers to Cynthia's staff. Themed events, Dr. Seuss night. Could go on for an hour about this, and we have no time. 
but the faces of tolerance in the hands of friendships where the kids made plaster masks of their own face, straws in their nose, had to trust an artist, breathe through while the plaster cured, hands away, paint those faces, and then trade those with another child of different ethnicity or different walk in life, like a jersey in a soccer game. It was a phenomenal event. The kids had to commit to 10 weeks of Friday night. The parents had to commit too. We started out with 30 kids, 28 finished. Thank you, Jenny, the artist. And there's your dream center after five years and growing. I'd like now to introduce Cynthia and the dream team. Thank you, Mike. That was an unbelievable speech. I'm here to show the love and all the love that Mike and his family have put into the Dream Center. Without it, these children wouldn't have a safe place to come every night, Monday through Friday, to get homework help, to meet a new volunteer, to get help with homework. And it's all thanks to the volunteers and the children they all want to learn. They all want to be something. They all have a dream. We all have a dream, and we honor theirs. And with that in mind, we have three wonderful kids here to share with you their story and also their dream. And with that, I'd like to introduce my very dear friend, Silvio Delgado. I've known Silvio for about five years. He is a principal over at Sunland School, and he's instrumental in so many programs, including our Dream Center Thrift Store, which Mike talked about, which has been such the most incredibly beautiful thing. When the children finish their sticker charts, they receive $2.50 in their checking account. They save their money. The store is open on Friday. Silvio interviewed, interviewed over 50 people, 12 were selected. They're all kids who run the store. The difference is they don't buy for themselves. They buy for others. And you will hear that shared with the stories from the children. And at this time, I'd like to introduce Silvio Delgado. So uh, Cynthia is entirely too humble. This woman should have a halo around her. So please, let's give it up for Cynthia. She is a, an absolute phenomenal person. I'm going to give her a hug. Excuse me. Uh, like Cynthia said, my name is Silvio Delgado. Good morning. So I'm used to speaking to about 600 or 700 or so kindergarten through eighth graders. So I need some more energy than from you, please. Good morning. Oh, there it is. All right. All right. So as Cynthia said, I'm the assistant principal at Sunland Elementary School. I dream of one day becoming the principal one day, one day, right? And about five years ago, I started volunteering at the Dream Center. And honestly, the Dream Center is truly a special place. Pictures do not do the Dream Center enough justice. I started volunteering there because I wanted to find a volunteer opportunity, believe it or not, for my students in my classroom and at my school. And as you can imagine, when you see these beautiful faces, how do you not fall in love right away? And for the past five years, I've been going to the Dream Center just about every single Friday, volunteering, working with, and learning from these amazing kids I have to my left. And if I can ask you to do one thing, please, if you have some time, come by the Dream Center and see just how special of a place it really is. Not at the same time, because there are a lot of you. Uh, so please, take your time. And I know you didn't come to hear from me. You came to hear from our beautiful, amazing, intelligent, phenomenal kids. So uh, first, we're going to hear from Lizbeth who is one of our sixth grade kids at the Dream Center. Lizbeth, could you tell us, what's your favorite part about the Dream Center? My favorite part about the Dream Center is a thrift store. 
it's here. Elizabeth, could you tell us, why, why is that your favorite part? Because I get to see kids buy for others. And, yeah, no, that's... <laughs> and just so you know, all three of our kids up here are store employees. So, Lizbeth, could you tell our folks out here, what are some of the responsibilities you have as a store employee? I work at the cash register, and I tell people their proper balance and make sure they get the correct change. <laughs> so do you also balance checkbooks? Yes. Okay, raise your hand if you know how to balance a, checkbook, a checkbook. I'm not raising mine. So uh, I know you have amazing dreams, Lizbeth. Could you tell us... What's your dream for your future? My dream is to become an architect. That's, that's awesome. Lizbeth, good luck. You ready? We got this. Mm, mm, boom, boom. What? Space shuttle. No big deal. All right, Jaime. Tell us, what is your favorite part about the Dream Center? I like a lot of things about the Dream Center, but my favorite is the math tutoring. Math tutoring, all right. So uh, Jaime, could you tell us more about what does math tutoring look like in the Dream Center? Every Tuesday, Kyle comes and tutors kids in math. Kyle comes and tutors kids in math, and is there anything you'd like to say to Kyle who's actually right here in this room? Yes, I would. I would like to say thank you for helping me so much in math. Kyle, where are you? Where are you, Kyle? Over there. Kyle, let's. Thank you so much. Thank you to Kyle and all of our volunteers because every single day in the Dream Center we have math tutoring, reading tutoring, writing tutoring, science tutoring. If a student needs help, if a kid needs help when they come into the Dream Center, volunteers sit down with our kids to help them with whatever they need. So Jaime, you've been receiving math tutoring from Kyle. Have we seen some change in school since you started? Yes, I have. At first, my math grade wasn't all that good, but thanks to Kyle, I've helped it improve. Wow, that's awesome. So we heard from Lizbeth. Jaime, tell us, what's your dream for your future? My dream is to become a neurosurgeon. <laughs> That is awesome. Jaime, good luck to you. I wish you the best. We wish you the best, right? Ready? What? The first time he got me, by the way. All right, Frank, the eighth grade big bro on the stage. What is your favorite part about the Dream Center? My favorite part about the Dream Center is playing chess with other kids and volunteers. Playing chess with other kids and volunteers. Tell us, why is that your favorite part, Frank? You really get to know the person you are playing against, and you have lots of fun competing. And, Frank, have you ever played against me? <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, he has not. But there's a life-size chess board that has our name on it after this breakfast is over. Just saying. Right here. Yeah. So uh, just so you folks know, uh, we at the Dream Center had the absolute privilege of going to see The Queen of Katwe, which is a documentary. Yeah, I was expecting a clap for that. All right. It is a phenomenal movie uh, about a young lady in Uganda who rose to become a master chess champion. And all three of our kids up here got to go see that movie with us. And Frank, his reflection about the movie is phenomenal. I wanted to ask you, Frank, could you share with our folks... What was your takeaway from seeing the Queen of Katwe? Well, first of all, I just want to tell you all that I'm going to beat him in chess. <laughs> I believe it. Well, in my journal, I wrote that it doesn't matter where you're from. As long as you follow your dreams and put in effort, you can accomplish anything. Uh, yeah. Even beating Silvio in chess? Yes. 
I agree. So, Frank, tell us, what is your dream for your future? You're an eighth grader, getting ready for high school. What's your dream? My dream is to attend and graduate Brophy, and from there, become a mechanical engineer. Good luck to you, Frank. I'm going to do this now because after we play, we're probably not going to be looking at each other. So good luck, my friend. Good pass, me Please join me in thanking these wonderful, amazing kids, ladies and gentlemen.